Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. We are going to do a ear training lesson now, which will involve some singing, as most of the ear training lessons should be. I think ear training shouldn't be about just detection. It should be about you singing the actual answer. That's how I think your brain will familiarize itself most with whatever it's hearing. Because ear training needs you to also know the theory of what's going on in the music. and then bring it out with your voice and also be able to find it find the answer or check the correct answer on the instrument of your choice if it's piano or guitar or whatever it may be that's also what i call as 3d ear training where you don't just work on ear training per se you work on ear training with theory and technique so about the lesson we are going to look at how you can detect and sing intervals in both directions of the root so if you take this root let's say d actually you have 12 root possibilities in music i just happen to take d today and the way this is going to work is you'll have to sing an interval in the upper direction la la that would be a perfect fifth and before i play it on the piano i will sing it and then check my answer sa pa pa we say in india is fifth sa pa perfect fifth that's another way to bring out the answer perfect fifth now this is an ascending perfect fifth in the sense it's going above the root if the root is lower pitch and the fifth is higher however i could have i could do root fifth or have the fifth first fifth root pa sa pa ma ga re sa pa sa and then i could go to another level by what i'm proposing we do in this lesson which is reverse this interval altogether so it doesn't become root fifth it becomes root lower fifth root fifth and then we sing pa sa that could be pa sa or if this is the new sa sa it then the d would be its ma or its fo so that will be sa ma sa ma sa ma sa ma versus sa pa sa pa if this is my root so depending on the root depending on the direction you're going to train pretty much the same two objects or the same two notes that's where i think this lesson will be a lot of fun so stick around till the very end get your keyboards out but don't cheat so you don't want to play everything that you hear and then validate it by singing no it should be the other way around you should sing it and then check the answer by playing the keyboard if you are not sure of the answer okay so before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button turning on the bell icon for regular notifications and you can support us on patreon for packages as low as $5 a month wherein you're going to get all my handwritten notes midi files backing tracks wherever applicable and you can bump up the tire and do workshops at our school do private lessons with me learn songs and a host of other things which i just cannot remember right now Go to Patreon. So I'm taking D as my base. First of all, let's get into some basics of intervals. Let's quickly look at all the intervals with respect to D. So you have your the kinds of intervals would be based on names combined with numbers. So the names we have are majors, perfects, minors, diminished, and augmented. Major, minor, perfect, augmented, diminished. So if in the major scale you are only going to get major intervals perfect intervals it's pretty much it so let's look at the major scale d to itself is called as a unison same thing <clears throat> same pitch also but d to the d is called an octave or perfect octave octave could be either higher than the root or lower than the root la la sa 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 while unison is sa sa root root you don't change your pitch so perfect unison perfect octave then you have your perfect fifth perfect fifth that's a fifth degree of the major scale 
Also in the circle of fifths, it's the next closest uh, clockwise neighbor. Sa pa, sa pa, perfect fifth, and then your perfect fourth. Sa ma, sa ma, perfect fourth, which is circle of fifths counterclockwise. So we've got that out of the way. Perfect unison, perfect octave, perfect fifth, perfect fourth. The other intervals in the major scale are just called major. So, major second, major third, major sixth, major seventh. So you don't have a major fourth and a major fifth. Keep that in mind. So, major second, major third, major sixth, major seventh. So, sa re sa ga sa dha sa ni. But there are there's not just the major scale in music, right? There are other scales, and thus other intervals. So if you take the minor scale, in this case D natural minor, you'll find that instead of the F sharp, you have an F. So what are all the minor intervals out there? So you'll have a minor second, minor second. There we go. Minor second, then minor third. In comparison, this is a major second. This is a minor second. Then you have a <clears throat> minor third, major third. Okay. Then you have your perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Then you have your minor sixth, minor sixth. Then you have minor seventh. This is your major seventh. Major, like I suggest, try to sing it and then play it. Major seventh, and then minor seventh. Then major sixth, minor sixth, perfect fifth, and then try to. The tritones interesting because we give it a lot of names. You can refer to it as a diminished fifth or an augmented fourth. We generally say augmented fourth when the fourth is not used. Instead, the fourth got replaced by the sharp four. So that's used a lot in the Lydian world. The diminished fifth or the tritone would be used more in a Locrian context. Replace the perfect fifth with the flattened fifth. Okay, and similarly, you can refer to the minor sixth. You can refer to the minor sixth as an augmented fifth. You can take the perfect fifth and step it up, or sharpen it, or raise it up. Sa pa sa, not the, still sa. Sapa, which uh, Indian musicians might get angry about because you pa is always perfect fifth in most Indian music, from what I know. So you're raising this. You could get you could get a raised fifth and no perfect fifth at all. So that's about the theory of intervals. We've done a lot of exhaustive work on this subject, so I'm not going to spend too long. Not only on this channel, but if you want a structured <clears throat> theory and ear training curriculum, you can head over to nathanielschool.com and do one of two things. You can do a semester at our school where we teach you all of this stuff over six months and more if you want. However, if you cannot join us in person, you can also do our video courses which have all these uh, topics covered in great detail and also in a structured manner. Okay, so coming to the actual ear training exercise, now that we know the names of the intervals, let's revise the names one last time. So, minor second or unison, minor second, major second, minor third, major third, perfect fourth, tritone or augmented fourth or diminished fifth, <coughs> perfect fifth, augmented fifth or minor sixth, major sixth which sometimes we also refer to as diminished seventh. If you have a diminished seventh chord in there, we call the major sixth as a diminished seventh. 
and so on. And then you have a minor seven, major seven, and finally somewhere octave of. You can remember these with popular songs as well. So the first challenge for us to do is to sing the interval and practice both ascending and descending versions of this interval. So that would be. So play that on the piano keyboard and then you have to sing the descending version. So that will be Sa Re and what are you supposed to sing? Re Sa Re Sa 1, 2, 2, 1 D, E, E, D Then similarly Sa Ga Ga Sa now, if you're struggling to get to the girl, maybe the piano can help you. Sing that. Sa ga. And now. Ga sa. Ga sa. So, what do we have so far? Sa re re sa. Then. Sa ga ga sa. Then you can do perfect fourth. Sa ma. Sa ma ma sa. Then we go. <clears throat> sa pa sa pa pa sa. <clears throat> Basically, you can do all these intervals. Sa da sa da da sa. Then <clears throat> sa ni ni sa ni sa. That's a bit tricky. Sa ni. That's a dominant seventh or minor seventh. Sa ni ni sa ni sa. Then sa sa octave, octave root, octave root. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the first thing you want to work on. Some of you might already be familiar with this or maybe able to do it, but haven't practiced it in this uh, schooled kind of approach. So do this first. And then moving forward, you can sing an interval. Let's say the fifth. La, la. And now here's what you need to do. You need to sing the interval and then flip the, the thing you just sang. So sa, pa. how do you flip it? You have to sing that an octave below. So la, la. Sa pa pa. <clears throat> there we go. Sa pa pa sa. Got that? Sa pa pa sa. So I took that fifth A. La la. Dropped it down an octave and then went back to the root. So sa pa pa sa. So similarly, if you do it with the ma or the four, sa ma ma sa ma sa sa ma ma sa. Now a lot of people might also argue that if you're doing a perfect fourth in the upper direction, won't it become a perfect fifth in the descending direction? Yes, th because that's what reversed intervals are. But remember, intervals, when you hear them melodically, one after the other, it could be done as ascending intervals, so that's a lower pitch to the then higher pitch, or else descending intervals, which would be a higher pitch to the lower pitch. So then we don't know which is the reference point. So that you can either assume, let's take the case study of D to G, you could argue that D is the root and G is the fourth. You could also argue that D is the fifth while G is the root, you know. So it depends on how you sing this stuff, depending on the root or the scale of the song. <clears throat> so your first operation would be Sama, perfect fourth, and then perfect fourth to the root or else Pasa. Let's say this is your Sa. The one you landed on is the sa. Pa sa. Sa pa. Similarly, <clears throat> perfect fifth, perfect fifth, fifth to the root, 
five one or else this could be the four of the one four of the one one to the four depends so be either ways even if you cannot remember the no, the name of the interval at least be able to sing it so la 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 or la 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 now let's do that with the third la 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 a very different taste so a major third could also be looked at and probably should also be looked at as the gap between the two notes which is four steps from d so these major third is f sharp while f sharp's minor sixth is d so this is we where we get to interval inversion if it's a major in the ascend in the higher pitch direction it's going to be a minor when you reverse it and this doesn't even have to have anything to do with pitch it's just the literal gap it's the distance between the notes in terms of semitones or half steps as they call it so major third will be four steps apart while a minor sixth would be a lot more steps apart i think eight steps 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 there we go not that that's very important but it's just important to know that it's when you invert it the width and the sound will change so major third tends to sound very positive while a minor six would be a bit more pensive okay let's look at a few other minor six out there c is minor six d sharp so see if i stack up a lot of minor six for you now you get the vibe right while if i stack up many major thirds for you it has a more of a positive vibe doesn't it so now we've gone into this process of inverting or reversing the interval so how do you calculate the reversed interval simple formula would be 9 minus the interval you're dealing with so if you're dealing with a 4 what is 9 minus 4 it's a tough one 5 so a perfect fourth on the way on the on a perfect fourth let's say forget on the way up or down that doesn't apply so if you take a perfect fourth from c that will be f what will be the perfect fifth from f so c to f now c is my focal point f is its perfect fourth what if you invert it what if it's f with respect to c okay so c's perfect fourth is f f's perfect fifth is c how do we remember that 9 minus interval number gives you the reverse or the flip similarly what happens with thirds c's major third <coughs> is e what would be e to c called what is 9 minus 3 6 and what will be the reversed interval will it be a major sixth on inversion no a major third when you invert it becomes a minor so when you invert major it becomes minor when you invert perfect they stay perfect you don't change the name when you invert and augment it it becomes diminished or vice versa you invert a minor it becomes major you invert a diminished it becomes augmented so augmented and diminished will invert to each other major and minor will also <clears throat> interchange to each other but the number remember an interval has a name as well as a number name is major minor perfect augmented diminished number would be 2 3 4 5 6 7 so the number how you calculate the number is 9 minus so coming back to d so you sing the interval let's take singing a b flat d b flat which is a minor 6 isn't it sadha now sadha ho sadha saga and it becomes a ga with respect to b flat if i push it downward sa dha d b flat b flat d do a dia while the same two notes don't sound like a do a dia or don't sound happy they sound a bit more like a movie theme like a very pensive production 
So let's try it with a major six. Sa da we a pi do do b. Sixth on inversion becomes a minor third. You should be able to sing that. So take the root. Sa da go up a sixth and then ooh, ooh, do a down octave of that. Ooh, 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 and then you get your minor third. So let's try and do all possible um, <clears throat> inversions or flips of the intervals before we pack up, and uh, then let me know in the comments if you'd like to learn more of this interval stuff or ear training in general. What are the things which you are finding challenging? Maybe even I find it challenging, so I can also practice and try to teach you. Or if I know know it already, I can definitely do a a future YouTube lesson. Okay, so let's take D. Let's start with a tricky one, right next to D. So minor second, minor second. That'll be ooh, ooh. minor second on inversion becomes a major seven. So la la ooh he. So that's a bit tricky. La la ooh he. Without the piano. They're beating and fighting with each other, but still, it's you have to try it. Then you go major second, major second becomes a minor seventh on inversion. Major second becomes a minor seventh. Seven, which you're familiar with, while well, this is your major uh, second. What's after that? M minor third. First of all, what will that become on inversion? Minor third becomes a major sixth on inversion. So, sing that jump first. And then, drop that down an octave. La la ooh he, la la ooh he, da da ooh he. So you can even say it as you sing. Minor third, major sixth. Repeat. Minor third, major sixth. Then you do major third, minor sixth. Because major third, when inverted, becomes a minor sixth. Major third, minor sixth. What happens after major third? Chromatically, perfect fourth. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Perfect fourth, perfect fifth. Then tritone, tritone. The beauty of the tritone is it stays pretty much the same. Tritone is the only interval where when you reverse it. It just sounds pretty much the same because the distance between the notes and the vibe, the sound, it's it's all the same. It's a perfect fifth minus one. So which is that interval which divides the octave into exactly two pieces? Probably the tritone. Not really two pieces because you're dividing frequencies, which is a which is not a linear thing. So, but we just tell that when we teach. Okay, but it's not, it's. I don't think it's right. It's tritone, 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 tritone. So tritone, tritone. You don't want to go tritone. That's far from the tritone. That's a perfect fifth. It sounds very calm. Tritone doesn't sound calm. It sounds very apocalyptic. Tritone. Okay, then we have perfect fifth. Perfect fifth. Becomes perfect fourth, no? So first sing that perfect fifth, pa pa pa, perfect fourth, then perfect 
not perfect anymore augmented fifth or minus sixth becomes what on inversion minus sixth becomes a major third minus sixth becomes a major third then major sixth becomes a minor third that's bd versus db then minor seventh becomes a major second minor seven becomes a major second <clears throat> finally major seven becomes a minor se second major seven becomes a minor second okay so in a nutshell you're taking any interval in the ascending pitch direction singing the the landed interval dropping that down an interval singing that and from there you're recalibrating things or you just look at it as ascending and descending intervals you know it just went it's an ascending fifth versus a descending fourth or something like that and then you either and then it becomes theoretically important as to what you want to call it do you want to call so for example if i take d g that's a ascending fourth you could call it ascending perfect fourth but now if you do g d you could call this an ascending perfect fifth but i could also argue that this is a descending perfect fifth as well with g as the root so that ascending descending game becomes a bit tricky so i leave that to you how you want to spell out the interval when you sing but if you forget all the naming and all the theory here's what you do you play a note <coughs> sing an interval upstairs if you only know swaras let's say you're a hindustani or a carnatic trained musician and forget about perfect major minor and all that stuff just go sama Masa, masa. That masa feels a bit weird because you have to go there and then drop all the way. Similarly, sa ga ga sa. I think in Indian music you'll have to still call it ga ga ga. You know, but what I was saying with the Western music theory, you go sa ga, which is a minor third, and when you flip it, it becomes a major sixth. has the quality of a major 6 so to speak because of the mood those two notes give you so you don't say that oh the scale sounds a certain way here you're saying that two notes itself have a certain bond or have a certain flavor or a vibe or an emotion when they collide with each other which is why i tend to define intervals itself as an interval is when two notes collide with each other and the collision could be melodic or harmonic i don't like to say interval is the distance between notes i don't know what that distance means in some cases it could be useful technically but i don't think it'll be very useful for your ear to process it you should look at it more as a vibe between <clears throat> two two sounds they collide with each other and they give you a vibe which is either chaotic or calm or sad or happy or mysterious or whatever right guys if you want to study intervals a bit further do consider going to our website and doing our structured courses either video courses or the semester programs which are live classes at our school you can also consider heading over to the year training playlists on the U on our youtube channel we leave you some of them in the playlist uh, <clears throat> we leave you a few of them in the description so you can check that out as well thanks a ton for watching the video thanks for your support cheers and catch you in the next one